I am Rebecca from Chemnitz, and I'm here today with a lot of boxes. I have a lot of yarn, and it's mostly going to be bare yarn to open up and share. And I'm realizing I want to raise this camera up a bit more. So I think we'll use a nice uh, boxcar children box set to help with that. <laughs> oh dear. Um... Oh yay, thank you. Um, so I should add that I am an affiliate marketer with a few of the companies I am unboxing for. Uh, so, I think it was weird. Maybe I just need to back up. Nope, too low. Sorry. <laughs> there we go, that's better. Uh, I am an affiliate marketer with some of these companies. Uh, so I do have affiliate links in the video description to Knit Crate, Dyer Supplier, and Knit Picks, and I guess technically also Amazon. What this means is that the links that I share are affiliate links, and I do earn commissions from companies when people make purchases through these links. But you're under no obligation to use them or anything like that. Now, of the stuff I'm opening today, I bought most of it myself, um, and I'm going to be opening up things from Knit Picks, Wool to Die For, Dyer Supplier, and Knit Crate. I actually have a couple more of the May 2020 Knit Crates to open up, maybe at the very end, uh, which is extra special because I'm featured in them. I've already got an unboxing for this on the channel, but they sent me some more because they, you know, some more, so I have more to play with, um, which was very, very nice. So the items that were sent to me from companies were uh, the Knit Crates I got for free, and actually Knit Crate... Um, and Dyer Supplier sent me a present, which I have not yet opened, and I'm very excited to see. I know it's yarn, <laughs> but I'm very excited to see what they picked up for me um, as just like a, as a thank you. So welcome, welcome, everyone. Oh, I'm in Massachusetts, too. <laughs> uh, and oh, I need to make sure I can see the chat. Yeah, I'm really excited because I need to, yeah. I mean, some of these have been sitting here for maybe a couple months. It's been a while since I've done one of these. But um, as we get into it, first I want to share one that I technically opened, but I haven't gone through. I haven't unwrapped everything yet. So this is a package that I ordered from Dyer Supplier using the awesome uh, code that was in the Knit Crate last month. And I got a bunch of samples of things, which we'll open up and I'll give... I don't think I've used many of these before, so I'll give an impression. But the thing I noticed when I unboxed this was a little explosion of some zip ties, which I think is really cool to include in there. If you've watched any of my videos, you know I love reusable nylon zip ties, and I use them all the time. These ones I don't think are reusable, but it's a kind thing for them to include in the package because they do have a use as like a little handle or an extra tie when dyeing yarn. So it is, oh, there's even more. I wonder, I wonder if there's like one per skein. I could have lost some, but let's see how many there are in here. Um, three, four, five, six, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 15. Okay, I ordered more than 15. So maybe it was just like a, quick handful. Um, so I'm not, I'm not entirely sure. I haven't asked about that exactly, but this was the, this is the order that I placed myself and the things that I chose to purchase, um, in case you guys are curious. Um, oh, that's not even the marled sock base. It's a different one. Okay. So the first thing I got was a big bag of the 7525 sock yarn. I'm not going to open this further, but, um, it's fun. It's a bit different from the ones that I use from Knit Picks. I have a whole video comparing 7525 sock yarn bases from these three companies, um, but it's three ply and it's really beautiful. And so I got some more. I probably would have chosen to get the 80-20, but the bags of it were out of stock um, when I ordered. And so I actually got, oh no, that's not, Okay, so I do have an 80-20 sample. Um, and so this is the one that I know. And so this is how when you get a sample stain, they show up um, in a bag. And it's what's nice. Um, oh, wow. 
they there's a gift card in here. What? There's a gift card value. Huh? I, this is this is cool because, um, and so in here there's like just like a little code for for a gift, and it's looks like there's one of these in with each of the samples, which is cool. I'm ass I'm assuming. So it's to use off your per next purchase of a five pack. I'm assuming that it's probably one coupon code per customer at a time, but that's cool. Okay, so this is the um, the eighty twenty. This is the super wash one, and I've used this a lot. Um, and then here is a sample of the non super wash eighty twenty, and I thought that it could be fun to do like a side by side video with these two when I realized they had both. Um, so I would say right off the bat, the Superwash one is a little bit more yellow. I'm not sure if you guys can tell, um, but this is my first time holding the non Superwash. It's soft. So I tend to be more, I'm not really a sock knitter. I like lace and shawls are kind of my favorite thing that I make over and over. So I personally, would probably pick the non super wash over the super wash just because the washability factor isn't that important to me. Um, okay, so the coupon codes only work with the same, a five pack of the same that's the sampler. Um, I'm curious about the ply number of the non super wash. That's what I'm doing right now. Okay, so it's also a three ply. So this non super wash 8020, the super wash 8020 seem to be really good. Um, like dupes, I suppose. Um, yeah, and they're both about 400 yards per 100 grams. So I think that it'll be a really good superwash versus non-superwash comparison. Because a lot of the time when I do those kinds of comparisons, I might look at something, it, I don't always have like the same nylon content in them. So yeah, expect a fun video with that at some point. Um, Oh, yay! And feel free to ask questions along the way. I mean, I'm looking at a lot of bases for the first time um, that I haven't died with. It's just one of the reasons why I ordered them. Now, this is the, and I'm now totally blanking about the bases that were in my knit crates because I got one knit crate and one sock crate. Um, and so this is the two ply superwash sock. It's 100% superwash merino, and there's no nylon in this one. Um, which is also attractive. I like a two ply yarn. This one is not um, super high twist. It's fairly relaxed, but there's a chance it could bloom and sort of plump up and therefore like sort of shrink in length once it is dyed. And so that's something that I might look at for this one. Um, so they said it's about 399 yards per 100 grams. And yeah, it's, you know, some bases, uh, when they're in their raw form look a little different before you dye it and sometimes when you dye you see it might like plump up and bloom um, and so yeah uh, hello everybody oh is that weird thank you I appreciate that um, yeah so one video uh, when I'm looking at the uh, the bear Zara that was that's a really good example of a super high twist yarn that looks a bit more stretched out in the raw form but as soon as you dye it and go through that like heat process it fluffs in a way that then you get that beautiful high twist and that round bouncy yarn that is gorgeous um i don't have that downstairs with me right now but yeah so i'm curious i guess i'm, I'm curious if that would happen with this but it's also really soft and um, feels really, really nice. I can't believe I'm blanking on, of course I have the crates I've already opened upstairs. Okay, there is that. Um, oh, I can be fairly socially awkward myself. I mean, I spend a lot of my days sitting by myself, just talking to myself. And then whenever I talk about just talking to myself, I always think of Jurassic Park. So, um, do I sell white yarn today? No. Um, I sell in my Etsy shop some of the yarn that I have dyed in my videos, but in general, um, like I like I have affiliate links. So like I do earn money if you buy through, I have links to 
Knit Picks, Dyer Supplier, and um, Knit Crate, and uh, Wool to Die For in the video description. And Wool to Die For, I don't have an affiliate link with them, but of course, you know, if you're interested in the yarn I'm opening, you're more than welcome to buy from them or just go to the companies. So I try to share things that I use anyway. Okay, so this is not the Marled Sock Yarn. This is a base I've never felt before. Uh, my Etsy name is Chemnitz Creations, and there should also be a link to my shop, um, more towards the bottom probably of the video description. Uh, so this is the Marled, oh, I guess it is called Marled. So there's a Marled sock yarn that I love um, that is like a four ply, but they have different colors in the twist. So this is the Marled Chunky Yarn. It's 100% superwash Peruvian Highland wool, and this is beautiful. Um, it is 60 yards to per 100 grams. The twist is pretty high, so I don't feel like it would pull apart and break. Um, and so, yeah, that's awesome. Oh, Christine! Christine Crispy, thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, thank you. Uh, mm, it smells delightfully wooly, but not like dirty sheep or anything. It just smells, I really like this one. I think that this would be really, really fun for, yeah, I think I'd like this in a hat. I think I want more of this one. So now I'm curious. Okay, so that's so cool that there's, when you get a sample, that there's a coupe discount off of a five pack. Because I guess the price of a sample is probably, I haven't done the math, I'm assuming the price of a single skein is more than the five pack. Uh, you can get a wholesale account with Dyer Supplier. Um, and so then through the wholesale, the more you buy, the more you save. Um, but what is this one? This is a non superwash, 100% merino. It's a fingering weight. And this is the Talansa, Talansia Organic Four Ply Fingering Weight Yarn. This is pretty. Um, so it's uh, South American sourcing. It's mostly free and it's spun in Italy and it's about 430 yards per 100 grams. It is very, very soft. Not, I don't know, I'm a little, I'm slightly more excited about some of the others, but this is also, I mean, it is, it feels really, really nice. Um, so I have no, no complaints about it um, or anything. It almost, Strangely, it doesn't have silk in it, but reminds me a little bit of Knit Picks gloss. Um, something about the twist or like the feel of it um, feels a little silky. So uh, yeah, so that's that's fun. But I am excited for this one as well. You don't often, I don't see as many like superwash uh, fingering weight yarns that don't have nylon. And so uh, yeah, and again, like as a shawl knitter, uh, the nylon is not the thing I consider super important since I'm not as worried about the strength. Um, you really do want that nylon when you do the strength. But anyway, this is the haul that I purchased for myself. Um, and there's a question, do I ever spin dog fur? Uh, I actually have, but not my dog. When, when I started spinning, I actually, there was a Ravelry group and I was asking about like, you know, places to find different fiber contents. And there was someone who lived maybe about an hour from me was like, I have more fiber than I could ever spin in my lifetime. Um, do you want to come and pick up some fiber? <laughs> and so we, we connected and she gave me a huge garbage bag full of fiber. And so in there amongst everything else, um, was some unknown breed, but some white, uh, dog fur. So I have technically spun that and I have collected my, I don't know where he is. He's probably asleep. Uh, my almost nine-year-old puppy. Oh my gosh. Uh, he's growing up so much, but he's a white fluff ball, 25 pounds of mostly fur. And so at some point I hope to create an indie uh, themed yarn <laughs> for myself. Um, so yes, um, this, uh, the uh, Tillandsia organic yarn is fingering weight. 
Oh, and I'm gonna change this so I can see everything. Have I ever done Knit Picks Hawthorne DK? Yes, once. Um, so far, I've only done the DK once. Uh, in it was a Leave No Die Behind where I had some leftover guar gum. I think was the one where I did it, and I love I love Hawthorne. Um, it is a favorite for sure. And I had a knife. Oh dear. I'm like patting myself all over. If I were, no, okay, this is my, let me see my cute little pop socket. Um, uh oh, I had a box cutter. And what you never want to say, oh, here it is. What you never want to say about a box cutter is I had a box cutter when you have two young kids. Um, do I sell knitting on Etsy or just my yarn? Just my yarn. Um, I, yeah, I, I don't, I don't sell anything I knit. Um, I suppose at some point there, there's a chance I could add like a sample or something I've made, but yeah, occasionally I have like things I've tie dyed. Um, but at this stage it's based, it's mostly just yarn. Um, there are, I'm sitting on Legos. All right. So this is my present, uh, from uh, knit crate. And so ooh, I saw something that really excited me right away. Um, so the reason why I got this present and knit or dyer supplier has sent me bare yarn in the past to review, but this one is more of a present, uh, because I was featured in their May crate and I helped them like develop that. And they were, uh, really appreciative. So they sent me this as a little present. And when I talked to them the other day, they're surprised I hadn't opened it yet. Um, you feel the same way about Sharpies? Yes. Ooh. All right. So I am really excited um, because I know. Oh. <laughs> oh, Clem. Thank you. Um, I think they had some extra Kool-Aid. So I got some extra. I actually really need the Post-Its. Um, I use these when. So I sell. Um, and they're not available right now, but I do. Like I use these when, uh, so when I often print out like the packing slip when I'm going to do a viewer sponsored video. And then I use like these little post-its to like jot down ideas and thoughts on there to keep track of everything. And so these are really handy. And these are, well, um, these are the extra that were in the May knit crate. Um, but she also sent me some extra Kool-Aid. So, which I'm actually really happy about because I was running low and I'm not going to grocery stores personally right now. So this was um, extra handy. Um, yes, thank you. And I don't know why those messages were held for review because there's nothing wrong with them. Um, are there any sponsorship slots open? At the moment, no, they're currently sold out. Uh, mainly, they've been going really fast this year anyway, but, and so they, when they are restocked, they don't, but I've been restocking them slower because of the pandemic and my filming time has been reduced. Uh, so if you are interested in being on like a list for me to notify when I release new slots, uh, send me a message on Etsy and I can add you to that. But like the last time I released some, they sold out like in a day. So <laughs> that went pretty, pretty quickly, but yeah, feel free to reach out to me on Etsy to talk about it. Um, okay, so this is a base I love and I think I might be out of it or maybe not. I've definitely saved some of it. I really like it. This is the Silvery Sock yarn base and it is the shiniest Stellina based yarn I have ever seen. Um, and so it is 60% uh, Superwash Merino, 20% Nylon, 20% Silver Stellina. It is jam packed and I want, I'm not sure if it's going to do justice from my phone right now, but it is so sparkly and it almost has a bit of a gray cast because there's so much sparkle in it. Um, and I really, really love it. Okay. They also sent me some, oh good. Cause I think I was also out of this one, the silvery, wait, so that, no, this is the silvery sock. I believe, even though it's not labeled, this is the Sparkle Sock, um, which is which is a a lot of fun as well. But um, in comparison, it's fun when they send 
for me both. Um, so in comparison, the Sparkle Sock is, I believe they said it's like, I think it's 10% Stellina versus the 20%. And so um, one's more subtle and one is more intense with the Sparkle. Yes, this is from Dyer Supplier. This was a present that Dyer Supplier sent me. Um, okay, so I see some questions. How do my sponsorships uh, work? Well, I have a listing and sponsorships come with 100 grams of yarn I dye in my videos. It's sort of like a mystery um, so, so colorway, but I do take color preferences of the sponsors into account and sponsors pick the yarn base uh, that they'll receive. And then I use that. And if we've chatted a bit, I use that knowledge to um, pick you know, a, a dyeing video that I want to create that I think will be a good fit for uh, the, the sponsor. Or like if you've purchased from me in the past, I'll like take a peek at the yarn that you've purchased and sort of just figure out what I think that you might like. <laughs> Um, and what will make a fun video. And so that's, that's sort of how that works. And then you get shout outs in the video and stuff. So those are the sparkle bases. And I saw a question. I know people say citric acid can damage Stellina. Have you ever used powdered vinegar as the acid? I have not used powdered vinegar. I am not actually aware of powdered vinegar. Um, so yeah, uh, I mean, I, yeah, I, I don't know. Uh, so I haven't, I haven't tried that. Uh, and yeah, I actually wasn't aware that it was a thing because usually, um, and I'm not trying to think, because usually when we got had like in the lab, even acetic acid, it would, we'd get it as a liquid um, solution already. Learn about it on a cooking channel. Huh. Well, so the thing is with something like that, the reason why a lot of dyers say don't use citric acid with Stellina is that uh, if your conditions get too acidic, that can dull the luster. So if Stellina is exposed to too much acid and too much heat over too long of a time, then it will potentially be less sparkly and look more like tinfoil versus tinsel, if that makes sense. I haven't seen that happen personally. Uh, I have dyed the... Um, the sparkle sock with Kool-Aid, which is citric acid, and that was fine. Um, but I don't think I've stuck on the citric acid because I think with citric acid powder, it's really easy to add too much acid. Whereas with vinegar, which a lot of like cooking vinegar starts at 5%, you can't really get more acidic than that. And so it's harder to get it. And with, with citric acid, you could get more and more acidic. So uh, I think that that's one reason why you might want to avoid citric acid. Uh, I actually have a video and I've done speckling using sugar. So soaking the yarn with vinegar and then mixing the dye with sugar is a way that I've been able to do it without having citric acid. And I found that the sugar worked better than salt for, for playing with speckles. So I do have a video about that on the channel specifically because I was trying to figure out about speckling a sparkle base. Um, so in theory, I mean, I haven't experienced it, so I don't know. I just know from other dyers the recommendations to avoid, but some people still use citric acid and it's fine. I think it's about, you know, figuring out what that push point is. Uh, let's see. So yes, this is Dyer Supplier. Um, and the two bases were the Silvery Sock and the Sparkle Sock. And so this, I don't know what it is because it doesn't have a label. Let me see if I can figure this out. I do have a skew, I think. Okay, so I think this is the Superwash Sport Merino. Um, ooh. I don't know if it looks like sport weight to me. This definitely does not look sport weight. Uh, so I can reach out and ask Clem if she knows, but I don't think that there's a packing slip probably. So this is three ply. Um, and yeah, I mean, it doesn't, it looks more like fingering weight to me. Um, do I have a video? Yeah, I have one video that looks at vinegar versus citric acid so far in terms of breaking Wilton's Violet. 
Um, which was sort of a rough look just to show that like one tablespoon of citric acid is a lot more acidic than one tablespoon of vinegar. Um, so this is, this is pretty. I just don't know. Oh, wait, let's see. ZS028. Yeah, it's a Superwash Sport Merino. Announcements and cool stuff. Okay, yeah, I guess it's Super Raw Sport Merino. We'll see. It's possible that it'll bloom a bit. Um, but it does look thinner. But maybe, maybe it's a tad thicker than the fingering weight, but it's pretty close. Um, you might have to try the silvery sock because you've only tried the sparkle. The silvery sock, and thank you for the note of my enthusiasm. The silvery sock, sock, the, the silvery sock is definitely unique, and I haven't seen anything quite like it before. Um, I suppose I don't use a lot of sport. I do a lot of DK, which maybe is a tiny bit thicker than sport anyway. Um, so this is some BFL DK Superwash. Um, ooh. So this looks like it almost has a tiny bit of a halo to it. Um, and I would say I love spinning PFL. I would say that it feels, um, it's not quite as soft as the Super Rush Merinos that I felt, or that I've been touching. They're not, I haven't been felting them. Um, so this is four ply, but look, it just looks really, really thin. Um, so, but again, as I said, these all have the potential to bloom once they are dyed. Um, and so I know that sometimes when you have bare yarn, sometimes it has been washed and is in more like ready to knit form. Other times it's straight from the mill and that final processing step is the dyeing. So if you were to have like a retail natural colored wool, it's not necessarily in the same bare form straight from the mill because they've probably washed it um, and let it plump. Just like you would set the twist of yarn that you've spun, it's not quite done until you've done that last like soak and wash step. Um, do I crochet or primarily knit? I mostly knit, but I enjoy, to cro I enjoy crochet as well. I would consider myself much more of a novice when it comes to crochet, but I can, you know, I can look up a stitch and follow it. I finally like had that tension breakthrough where I wasn't doing it too tightly. So that was, that was a big breakthrough for me. Uh, gosh, but that was a while ago. That was probably not quite as old as Indy. <laughs> so probably, but still probably eight or nine years ago. Um, do I find that Dyer Supplier's fingering is um, thinner than knit picks? Oh gosh, uh, not necessarily. Um, I would look at, for a good comparison, I would look at my uh, video where I did like a comparison of 7525 sock yarns and I did wool to dye for Dyer Supplier and knit picks and compared them all, even price points. Like I really broke it down <laughs> for those skeins. Um, what's the difference between DK sport and fingering weight? That's a really great question. The main difference is the thickness of the yarn. And so one way that that's represented is in wraps per inch. So if you were to take something like a pencil and lightly wrap the yarn around it on a, you would get fewer wraps per inch for a really chunky yarn than you would uh, say a fingering weight yarn, but you would get even more wraps for lace weight or for thread. So that's one way, I guess, that you're, you look at the, almost the diameter of the yarn that you're dealing with. And it sometimes based on that, then the, there are recommendations on maybe the hook size or the needle size you want to get a different density of fabric. But there's some other like you know, it depends also, it's project dependent and personal preference a lot into what you use. Um, so yeah, in general, uh, sometimes like, I mean, in my shop, I like put DK and sport in the same category, but usually like when I look at them, they feel noticeably thicker than say 
uh, fingering weight, but uh, again, in the raw form, it can be harder to compare. And for nitpicks, for example, they're mostly a retail company. So I think that just based on the way the yarn is packaged, that their bare yarn is more, has probably been washed one more time, is my guess, because it looks very similar to the retail ready balls of yarn that they sell. Um, but so that's just, I don't know for a fact, that's just my hypothesis. Um, is a silver thread made with real silver? No. Um, I believe that Stellina is like, it's like an acrylic or something. It's synthetic. It occasionally could take a stain with certain dyes, but it doesn't absorb color. Like I've seen Stellina get stained from red number three, like in Wilton's Violet, but I haven't really seen it pick up color from acid dyes. Um, so it, I have microwaved it, so it's not actually metal. Um, and yay for catching a live! Um, I'm so glad to have helped. And we've got lots of boxes to go through. Um, do you know if the Aaron Bouncy softens after dyeing? I don't think I've tried that one. I I have a worsted from Dyer's Supplier I've tried that is super soft, but I don't think it's that one. I think it's like the Superwash Merino Worsted is the one I've used. Um, but I yeah, so they... Back when they were switching mills, they sent me a bunch of yarn to test out and play with. And then they released all these new bases that I just hadn't tried. <laughs> and so that's why I got a bunch of samples. And so we'll see what's in here. Oh, wait, was this the one you were asking about? The Bouncy Aaron? Oh, let's see. I'll feel it right now. <laughs> How is that? Could you see the box? Um, so if you're curious, this box I'm unboxing was a present for me. And, ooh, this is soft. So I would say, what it, so Bouncy Aaron, this is 100% Superwash Merino. Um, I mean, to me, it feel it doesn't feel rough at the moment. This is softer than the BFL Superwash that I've tried so far. Um, it, but it, it feels, you know what it feels almost like? It feels like when you take jeans and you air dry them. It feels a, a tiny bit stiff, and I imagine that it would soften a bit with dyeing, but it still feels very soft. It just has like that tiny bit of a feeling like, oh, I want to like rub this a bit and then it'll soften up if, if that makes sense. But it's still, I would consider this soft. Um, so this is a Superwash Merino. Um, it's Aaron Waite, uh, and it looks like it is four ply. Um, it's 170 yards per 100 grams. So it's definitely softer than, say, Wool of the Andes, uh, which is 100% Peruvian Highland wool at Nipix. Uh, I will say, though, that, I mean, I like Wool of the Andes a lot, and I wear use it for cowls and hats, too. So my scratchy meter is maybe a little different than other people's. Um... Um, do I know what kind of sheep the yarn comes from? Yes, this, so this comes from Merino. Um, and they do, um, the sheep dyer supplier is, uh, they try to ethically source their fiber and it's all mule sing free. Um, and so that's from South America and then it's spun at their mill in Italy. Yes. Um, okay, I should read the question. Is there any, uh, besides the obvious washability, is there any, um, notable differences between superwash and regular wool. And yes, there's a slight textural difference. I don't think I'm at a point where I could feel something and be like, oh, that's superwash, or no, it's not. But it has been treated, and so it almost, it's almost like a slippery feeling, but not super obvious or noticeable. It's very subtle, but it's there. And I think it's just because of the way that it's been stripped. Uh, the the sort of like strip it it's like you remove part of the like almost like barbs of the wool so that way it doesn't uh, get lose its order and get like all messy and therefore felted um, but I don't know a ton about the superwash process but the other big difference as a dyer <laughs> is that superwash yarns absorb color faster so if you want really sharp speckles you want superwash wool uh, if you, you can still speckle non superwash wool, but they'll bloom a bit more and be a more splotched versus mega, mega sharp speckles. Um, yeah, so it's, it's all like preference 
as well. Um, whether which is which is softer. So yeah, I non superwash wool isn't always softer. I think it depends a lot. But anyway, that is the Dyer Supplier haul, which was a lot more than I thought. <laughs> I was like, oh, this is a nice little box. I mean, I also thought that she was, that I guess I only thought that they were going to send me um, five or ten skeins. Um, because I used, when I made the video, um, it was ha like happenstance since I had Dyer Supplier yarn in hand. When I made the video for Knit Crate, I had some of those yarn bases on hand and so I could use that for the videos. And so they wanted to like provide the materials, but we also wanted to get started so I could film in time. And you know, it was, it was a really, really, it's been, was really fun working with them. Um, oh, MC 1R150, thank you. Wait, not 150, 1950. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you. Um, Rebecca, have you ever used food color powder? I wonder how it would work as speckles. Yes, I did once. Um, I didn't, it wasn't as easy to speckle with actually because it was so fine. And I think that it's more intent, intended for things that maybe aren't water soluble. So, so I had trouble almost getting it to, to dissolve a little bit. I think the yarn I created was really beautiful. Uh, but so I would search my channel for food coloring powder um, because I have done that. Uh, and I need to explore it more in the future. But I think for speckling with food coloring, if you can't access the little packets of Kool-Aid, which are one of the best sources, the other things I would explore would be sugar sprinkles. Um, so like the ones that you might put on cookies and things like that, because the sugar dissolves really quickly and it'll leave that pigment behind. And you can even make your own sugar sprinkles in custom colors, which is something that I've been meaning to do forever. And maybe I will hopefully do this summer. Goal, it's a goal. And you know, it's, it just keeps getting pushed back, but uh, it's something I really should do because I think the kids would actually really like making the sprinkles with me. And then I would maybe save some for them and they might like that. Uh, um, for the first time dyer, which yarn do you suggest using and chemicals to make it a positive experience? Oh, that's a great question. Uh, I recommend starting with food coloring just because it's a great way to see if you like it as a hobby, as an art. Um, and so if you use food coloring, you can use, like I'll use my kitchen pots and pans with food coloring. So you don't need to get special equipment, but I do recommend food coloring and then a wool or predominantly superwash wool yarn would be the best things I would pick to start with. But you don't have to dye the whole skein at once. So if you have a 100 gram skein, if you go back and look at the oldest videos, I was dying maybe two to three grams of yarn at a time because I was trying to make that one skein stretch as far as I possibly could to explore techniques and see what I like to do. Um, but also I was all in a very big like making like little uh, little knit toys phase and so having small amounts of different colors was really useful as well. Uh, but so that's something that I recommend as an inexpensive way to get started. Uh, let's see. Um, is it is dying my full time job? Yes. Uh, this is my full time job. Um, well, I mean, I guess my full time job is this and I am a like a parent. Um, so I have two young kids. And so right now, uh, my full time job is this. And uh, so I suppose it's yeah, <laughs> but this is this is my my job. I spend my time, um, most of my time filming and editing videos. And so the Etsy is a huge source of support for the content here on the channel um, because I sell the yarn that I dye in my videos, which then allows me to like have hauls like this <laughs> and things like that. Um, so uh, yeah, so the Etsy is very important, but I think that the video in sharing the video content is the primary like central tenant of my of my business. Uh, but the Etsy is probably the one of the biggest supporters of the business. Um, uh, and as for how to get traction on Etsy, I guess marketing is a, is a huge thing. And so 
um, using social media to share it, especially if you're dealing with hand dyed yarn. Um, there, it's a saturated market, but there's space for it in the market. And so find your own approach or vision and then try to share that with people because people like to find new dyers and find different ways that people approach it. And so that's, that's fun. And there's so many people like no indie dyer can supply everyone. And so I think that as a community, it's very supportive. Um, oh, thank you. I actually used to, um, so I do have a PhD in biochemistry and I was a chem tutor in college and, uh, in grad school, I tutored as well. Uh, and so before like life took me on a different path, uh, but yeah, that was, uh, something I, I really enjoyed doing. <laughs> um, so Subi says, I believe non-superwash wool is better for knitting color work, less soft, less slippery and blooms when washed. Yes. Uh, one of my favorite yarn bases for color work is non-superwash. It's Knit Picks palette. I love it. It's a fingering weight yarn. It's does great for color work because it's a little sticky. It's not my favorite to dye though, even though my favorite winter hat, that was the yarn base I used just because when I dye yarn, I don't like it when the fibers stick a little bit together because I don't find that as pretty, but I mean, that was, that's what makes it so great for color work. So, you know, it's, but that's the first yarn, the first wool yarn I ever dyed. Um, let's see. Uh, what do you think of Knit Picks Lindy Chain? Is it a two weight? I'm not sure what number weight is. I believe it is fingering weight. Lindy Chain is, feels like it would be great for like a summer top. It is, um, like it, I think that the chain plying gives it a little bit more bounce than it might have had otherwise. And I like it. It's not like the softest yarn in the world because it's like linen based, but uh, I, I do really like it. I, mean, I don't think I've knit with it, but I have dyed it. Uh, yes. Okay. Um, please. And if I, if I don't see a question, please keep asking. Okay. Let's go for knit picks. This big one. And thankfully this box was not falling apart. Oh yeah. And if you're not, please subscribe. <laughs> All right, so what did I order? I think that this was a mostly a housekeeping order. Ah, I got another Hawthorne um, sock blank, which is a newer edition. I've dyed this. I dyed this in one of the recent dialogues, and they're great. I mean, I love Hawthorne. I love high twist yarns a lot. Um, and so it's 80% uh, superwash fine highland wool, 20% polyamide, and I love it. Um, all right, and I think I got... This is the, the 75-25 I use the most. It is Stroll Fingering Weight Yarn. It's 75% Superwash Merino, 25% Nylon. And I got one, two, three, four, five. Uh, it should be a what? Six. Well, I better count. Um... So that'll be 60 skeins and looks like they sent me some huh okay so an individual is one two three four five six seven, eight, nine, 10. Okay. Um, it's possible. Did I order them individually? Sometimes if they're having a bear yarn sale, and I don't remember if this was part of that, maybe not. Sometimes if Knit Picks is having a bear yarn sale, it can be a better deal to buy the skeins individually and buy say 60 single skeins than three 20 packs. So it's always worth doing that comparison because some sales don't stack with the bulk pricing. Um, but I think that they must not have had a full bag. So they sent me, um, uh oh. What? This isn't good and I haven't opened this in a while. 
shipped zero. Where's my muse? Or did that come separately? Oh dear. I'm now feeling, uh, I feel like it maybe came and maybe I opened it. I hope because it's not in here. That would be very sad. This is the problem with waiting to open things because this came, oh, I guess this came at the end of May. I should really check on that. Okay. Um, all right, but we got, ooh, this is cute. I think they have some new, um, oh, they gave me another code, um, but I can't share it. Uh, this is a really cute rainbow card. No, they gave me a discount code um, in here. So to like thank because processing times are taking longer, but I can't share it because I'm only, as an affiliate, I'm only allowed to share codes that are publicly listed on their website. I can't share any that come to me personally in an email and things like that. Otherwise, I would happily share this. But a lot of times, I, what I can say is a lot of times people will post these codes like in a Ravelry group so or on Reddit. So a lot of times if you look, you can find them. Um, I'm just not allowed to, to share that, share it. Um, you tried using jelly beans and Skittles and it bombed. Do you have any advice? I actually don't really recommend jelly beans and Skittles. Uh, I, if you want to die with candy, I recommend chalky candy, like candy hearts and things like that. Um, oh, thank you, Susie. <laughs> Thanks for the, um, have you ever thought about putting vinegar in a spray bottle? Um, yarn soaked in water, spun almost dry, do your speckles and then spray with vinegar. I believe there have been a few times when I've sprayed with vinegar after the fact. There might have been a time when I did a bat. Um, and so I think, I think so. But anyway, there's something else in this Knit Picks box that is something that I thought that you guys would be really interested to see. Because otherwise, I might not have unboxed just a box of stroll if I thought there wasn't anything else really exciting in there. Um, Three bear stroll fingering 20 packs. Oh, okay. Because that's, sorry. I was like, what is going on? Um, but I got this. Greener Shades Acid Dye Starter Kit. Um, I've had a lot of requests to look at Greener Shades Acid Dyes. And so I got a kit with all nine colors. Wait, there, it's only a quarter ounce. Oh man, that is like nothing. That's like next to no dye. What did I think I ordered? I mean, I suppose, I suppose it's fine because I don't need that much because I have other acid dyes, <laughs> but that just seems like a tiny amount. So these are, um, I mean, it did come with eight ounces of citric acid, which is nice. Um, so greener shades dyes are supposed to have no heavy metals and things in them. Uh, okay, I guess it did say quarter ounce. I don't know why I thought they were bigger. So for, for perspective, um, uh, Jacquard, the small jars are half ounce, and I think that's about 14 grams. So, okay, I think I was a bit confused because, yeah, the half ounce, all right, that, I guess that's fine. Um, the half ounce jars of Greener Shades dyes retail at Knit Picks for $8.55 each. So that is more, much more expensive than, say, Jacquard. Um, but anyway, I'm excited to try this because people have asked and I enjoy exploring different brands. But... Even though this is deemed as being greener than um, other acid dyes, and I'm not putting the air quotes to say like I, I discount it, but it's still, it doesn't mean that it's as safe as like food coloring. So you still want dedicated dye equipment. You're still gonna want a respirator. You're still gonna want eye goggles when dyeing with it. They are still chemical based dyes. Um, so that's just still worth keeping in mind. Um, but I've been meaning to get them for a while just to try, and so I'm excited to have them. Um, 
Is it rude to ask a dyer about their techniques? That is a great question. Uh, no, but yes. Um, so someone like me who teaches and shares, uh, it's not rude to ask me questions ever. Um, and I actually have a Facebook group uh, where in there, by posting in there, you're inviting and welcoming questions. So in there, or in like, there's an art of hand dyeing yarn group in groups about dyeing yarn, like th those are for learning, those are for asking questions and that is welcome. Would it be rude to at a, like at a yarn expo, go up to a booth and say, where do you buy your bases from? What color, what color, you know, what shades of dye did you use to create this colorway? Yeah, that's pretty rude, um, potentially. But there's ways and times when dyers will, if you have like a true conversation with them, they might be willing to offer advice. And so some dyers are more than willing to talk about their suppliers, but won't tell you their recipes or maybe some of their techniques for some of their colorways because it is their business and some of those techniques are the things that set people apart. So it's not necessarily rude to ask questions. Like I think that if you're having a conversation with an indie dyer and you wanna say, hey, I'm interested in trying out dyeing yarn. Do you have any recommendations on like, you know, how to get started effectively and affordably, or in your opinion, what piece of equipment do you think is the, like would make the biggest difference for someone starting out? I think there's some questions like that that a lot of people would be really happy to answer. But I guess it's also worth keeping in mind that a lot of people are also super, super busy. So if you email someone and they don't respond, don't, I wouldn't take it personally or anything. They just uh, might not be able to. So. Yeah, it, it's, it's a yes and no. It's like there's a time and place where it could be okay to ask questions, especially if they're inviting questions. Um, so I know that um, uh, like, uh, so Adela from Lola Bean um, uh, Yarn, I'm now blanking if that's the, the official name, but she recently was going through on Instagram and showing her proofing cabinets and her electric yarn dryer and things like that and was talking about it and showing it. And I was just like, this is a dream. And so, you know, and I'd say she's multiple steps up from where I am, um, you know, and has like a full dye studio in her garage, um, you know, and I'm like still in my kitchen. But, you know, so I think that there's, people who are willing to share this information. Uh, but yeah, it, it, you know, it's not appropriate necessarily to, just like you wouldn't necessarily go up to a baker and say, hey, can you give me the recipe for like your bread so I can make it myself? You know, so it's, it's sort of like the, people might are willing to talk about the craft, but the way that you approach the conversation is also important. Um, So yeah, okay, let me, all right, so my last, oh, no, not my last one. Oh my gosh, this is it. Okay, so this box is from Wool to Die For, which is a large, um, they are mostly a wholesale-based company, I would say. So of the companies I'm opening, Nitpicks is mostly retail. Um, with, with Wool to Die For, you can't really, you can get Samples, I think if you're if you're a wholesale customer, you can get single skein samples from Wool to Die For. I think that you can get, if you reach out to them and ask as a retail customer, you could get a single skein sample. But in general, they sell things as 10 packs. Um, they sell most things as 10 packs. And so it's just worth knowing. And Dyer Supplier, they sell as five packs and they have wholesale options. Okay. So let's see what I got. In this order, I placed a long time ago. Ooh, okay, so <sighs> real like pandemic talk. So typically I do two different types of samplers a year. Um, I always do a sampler around Hanukkah and do like a different video and different um, skein to open each night. And last summer, I also did a summer sampler, which was like a, I did like a summer mini skein mini series, which was really fun. 
I have something planned for this summer, but it's not what my original vision was just because of the way that my filming schedule has been altered with having my kids home full time. It's been hard to film. So I've shifted gears from what I had originally envisioned. So maybe some of this will just be held till next summer or I have some minis of some other bases I've never used to play around with. So I have some Crazy 8 mini skeins. So this is 100% super wash. Uh, these maybe are the, does Crazy 8 come, is it just DK? I'm not sure. Maybe it's the thick, this is definitely the thicker one. So I've got Crazy 8, it's 100% Superwash Marina. She loves titanium, which is a two-ply, 75% Superwash Marino, 25% nylon sock yarn that I fell in love with, with my like comparison video. So I've got minis of this. Uh, these are some more Crazy 8s. Each of these packets of are 20 gram minis, and they have, um, although I guess I got some 10 gram of Sheila's titanium, uh, they come with 25 minis or micros uh, per bag. Let's see. More titanium. And titanium. I think titanium doesn't come in DK, so maybe that's why I got some crazy eights as well. But I haven't... There's another one. That's another titanium. Oh, okay. That's where the other crazy eights went. I think I got a lot. I had a plan. I had a plan. Yeah, so a lot of Sheila's Titanium, um, and I got two bags of the Micros just because, uh, I mean, look at how cute they are. They're so cute. Um, and then I got um, that Yak Sock. This is 70% Superwash Merino, 20% Yak, 10% Nylon, and I thought that this was going to be fun. I still think it's going to be fun, but yeah, I my... Yeah, my plan, I talked about it a bit on Patreon. Ooh, that's soft. But also look at the natural deep gray color. Isn't that beautiful? Um, so I'll say there is a plan for some kind of set. It's just going to be completely different from my original plan. But so, yeah, I bought a bunch of minis because I had plans. And... The result is going to be a lot smaller than what these original plans were because this is hundreds of mini skeins and I did not dye that many. But I think that what, what will be coming, and I'm still finalizing, oh gosh, uh, finalizing details of that, but with what's coming, I think the videos are going to be really, really fun and really informative and interesting. Uh, it's just you know, different from what I've done. Um, so I haven't dyed that gray yak um, colorway before. So it should take color beautifully from what I've seen, but what's gonna be a little different is the colors will definitely be more muted because you're not gonna erase that gray. Um, I've never dyed a soy blend before. I'd love to at some point though. Um, so yeah, but gray, I've also tried other gray yarn and I am, I like it. It's a fun way to get like a different depth and like it gives a richness to some of the colors. So you won't get something as bright. Like if you over dyed that with a neon, everything would feel more muted, but it's still really fun. Uh, you do art yarn. Uh, so Gosh, I mean, I guess I have trouble uh, imagining someone being nasty if someone says that they're spinning art yarn and being like, oh, that's not art yarn. I mean, I think that everyone's like perspective is different and people have different ideas of what things are. But I'm really sorry that if people are being mean and nasty to you. I mean, I think that uh, like an art yarn is something that I think a beginner can create really well because like some unevenness and spin and things are part of what contribute to something that is more of an art yarn versus like a perfect yarn. I mean, that's one reason why like, I, I consider like, I'm a, like, I don't spin perfect lace weight singles, but I also don't want to spin perfect lace weight singles because the, the change in that 
weight of the yarn is something I like and a reason why I like spinning my own yarn. Um, so yeah, I guess I don't have a better complete answer for you, but I hope that that helps somewhat. Um, I have to say I'm feeling a little bit overwhelmed by the amount of yarn around me because I don't know where I'm going to put it all. Um, yeah, I mean, it's, that sounds, that having tons of color and different fibers mixed in sounds beautiful. Uh, I don't know. I've never tried like listing art yarn, so I don't know necessarily what people may or may not be expecting, but yeah, I mean, I think that if you're, if you're selling something, just make sure you describe it really, really well in the description. Um, so when people were asking for advice about having a shop, that's one thing I'd recommend. So like if, for example, some people don't mind yarn dyed with food coloring, it can, like if, especially when wet, it is more prone to fading than say a like commercially dyed yarn, although some like fastness varies with different dye colors. Uh, so I always disclose like really quickly at the top of my listings, what kind of dye I use to dye the yarn. Um, because some people don't want to buy yarn dyed with food coloring and that is fine. And other people like using yarn dyed with food coloring. So uh, that's like why some of this stuff isn't just, imp it's always good to give information about the products that you're creating. Um, Um, uh, yeah, so uh, Kathleen was asking if I could do more. Are four weights, would that be worsted? The, uh, I don't deal with the numbers on weights a lot. I definitely dye a lot of worsted weight yarn. Um, and I actually like, so I've got like my shop bins and the worsted weight yarn bin currently is pretty full and I can't stuff any more yarn into it. Um, <laughs> but so I dye, like I, I don't dye chunky weight yarns as often mainly because some of them I guess the bases aren't haven't like excited me nearly as much I definitely have some chunky weight yarn videos coming up uh in general uh they die pretty well since a lot of times they tend to be lower twist say if you speckle they might not be as sharp uh but I think a lot of thicker yarns that I use often are used in combination with other ones but I think the reason why I lean mostly towards say fingering weight is because that's the the yarn weight that I knit with the most and so that's the one I'm most inclined to use um but I definitely um enjoy enjoy using them and in fact uh I now what what videos came out this week um so for example the the cotton yarn this week was worsted weight uh and then yeah when i did the kinky yarn uh last or maybe two weeks ago what is to wait a minute There's a video not showing up. Oh, and then um, yeah, this the I've had a lot of worsted weight yarn recently. The 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 yarn cakes I did recently were worsted weight. Um, so that's that's a weight I use um, a lot as well. Um, I guess I just don't specific. I guess it's been. A, I don't think I've done. And you know what would be fun? And I wish I had a pen. So maybe someone remind me in the comments after, <laughs> in case I forget to write it down. But it could be fun to say take like this um, wool of the Yandies line, which goes from palette, which is fingering weight, all the way through a bulky, and then do like a comparison of all the weights of one fiber type in one video. So that could actually be really fun. Um, I just don't have a pen, so I can't write that down. But all right, so now, ugh, have, how long have, wow, I've been going for an hour already. But, because I'm curious what yarn base I got in them. And okay, this is definitely a Knit Crate membership package. And so is this one, which I can tell because I have 200 grams of yarn. Um, do you have things made up in your yarn? So I haven't sold art yarn myself. Um, 
I'm trying to think. I'm not sure, Gretchen. Uh, I've dyed a few different types of cotton. Uh, let me see if I can think. Look, think of brands. I've dyed cotton thread. So. Um, like, what is it? Mercerized? Is that how you pronounce it? Uh, so maybe because I've definitely dyed crochet cotton thread before and, um, so I'm not a hundred percent sure. All right. But let's, let's open up these. Um, this is the May, still the May 2020 knit crate that and if you missed my first unboxing, you might see me get a little emotional now because uh, hold on. I'm gonna use, I did this during the last live stream. So I'm gonna cover up the download codes. All right. Da, 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 da. Look at that face. That's me. Uh, so I was featured in this because, so if you're curious, I know some of you are probably here because of uh, Knit Crate, but if you're curious about this, uh, because of the pandemic, Knit Crate's mill had to shut down and then wasn't shipping the, the yarn that they needed for the Make Crate. And so they reached out to me to see like if they could put together a DIY kind of crate. And although I suppose like knitting is DIY, but you know, a DIY yarn color crate. And so we came up with the, um, so we created this DIY Kool-Aid home dyeing project and I made tutorials for them and released even more videos about Kool-Aid on my channel. And it was really special because Kool-Aid is the very first yarn I ever dyed, I used Kool-Aid. I had a lot of 20% wool, 80% acrylic yarn that was off-white and I wanted it to not be off-white anymore. So I ran to the supermarket, found Kool-Aid and the rest is history. And so it's been really, really fun and amazing to, I'm getting emotional already, to share this with so many more people and to have people share what they're creating with me on Instagram has been really, really awesome and just as like it means so much to me that people are enjoying this because it's something I'm so passionate about and dyeing yarn is my happy place. Um, so I'm not going to read the little bio, but it is in, it was like in one of their, I don't know if it's on their blog or something too, but uh, yeah. So they didn't include an inspirations magazine in these crates because uh, just, you know, when thinking about all the moving parts, it's like we didn't want to worry about one thing being held up. So it was just a digital magazine for this month. But I love the postcard and my logo too. Like it's so cool. Um, oh, thank you so much. Uh, uh. Oh, I'm so sorry that this one fiber artists have been here to you. Okay, so this is the two ply superwash undyed sock yarn. And I believe this is some that I had just ordered. And so the crate came with uh, some zip ties that I showed that my um, dyer supplier order came with the zip ties, not my present from the company. And it looks like this is, ooh, this is the, the like natural. There's three different color vibes, or I guess four color vibes you can pick. Um, with Knit Crate, you can pick Anything Goes, which is usually the one that I get, um, because since they send it to me for free, I don't pick the colors I get. You can get um, Energize Me, which is warm toned, and that came with cherry and orange Kool-Aid, so red and orange. Um, there's Chill Out, which is cool toned, which came with the grape and the cherry. And then the All Natural, which I'm blanking on what it's called, came with the grape and orange because you can actually combine these to get a nice brown. Um, and I demonstrated that in a live stream that I did to help promote this. And so the Knit Crate came with the 200 grams of yarn, the two packets of Kool-Aid, this little um, Knit Crate, like sticky, like notes, handy pack. And then there's my 
tutorials. And so with one of the things I covered up here is there is a um, URL on here so that way you can go and you can download the Inspirations Magazine, which has information and my video is embed should be embedded there. Um, and also there's a ton of patterns this month. A lot of designers um, offered free patterns to knit crate subscribers. And there's a lot of patterns that were available in past crates that they included in this one um, to give options because since people are dyeing their own yarn, there's so many more types of colorways people can create. Um, your kids wear you down until you can drink it. Um, oh, yay! I haven't watched anyone else. Um, I haven't watched anyone else unbox it yet. I've been meaning to, but things have been homes like remote learning is really challenging. Um, I'm gonna open up this other one and see what yarn bases they are. Um, so the other reason that they're using normally. Um, they have these like teal boxes that they use, but they're using bags at the moment because it allows them to pack the crates efficiently using less staff um, at a time in the warehouse, um, which I think is important. And so this is, um, all right, I've got another one that is the two ply sock yarn. And this one is, huh? I've got the cherry. This is the chill out. I've got a cherry and uh, grape. And actually, I should set that with the other Kool-Aid because they gave me some more as a present. But I just, I don't know, seeing my face on a postcard is wild. <laughs> um, and like, it's, it's strange because when they started featuring different like influencers and stuff, um this year i thought that was so cool and people asked like oh was i one of them and i was like no no because i feel like i still feel very like s small beans even though okay actually if if you guys want to see me cry i'm gonna look something up right now um, <laughs> because i might have just hit a milestone no i have not yet hit a milestone I am currently at 39,910 subscribers. And so I'm about to cross the 40,000 mark, which is making me really emotional um, because dyeing yarn is, <laughs> that wasn't a swear, I promise. Dyeing yarn is truly my happy place. And it's something I'm really passionate about. And it's something that when I am ha struggling or something, it really helps me as like an escape and being able to share something I'm so passionate with so many people means a lot to me. And it means a lot that you guys enjoy my journey and my quirky, kooky, bubbly personality. Um, and my like willingness to make mistakes and do things that are less than perfect, but to continue to try and to grow and to improve. And so, the fact that I have so many of you supporting this journey means the world to me. And having the response be so positive for this crate. And I was nervous because like, it's something different. And so I didn't, we didn't know how people would respond. We hoped that people would be excited and like people were, and it's been such a good response. And like, it's just, yeah, it's really, really cool. Because normally, like, I've been hiding in, like, my own little, like, corner of the internet, you know? I haven't been to, like, I haven't done, like, a ton of networking necessarily or anything. And that's something that, like, I want to meet more people in person and stuff. But, you know, it's easy to just, like, stay here with my camera and my yarn and play. And it's just been really, really cool. And I'm really glad they asked me to do that and the like I you know I don't think that artists should do things like for exposure but I did see exposure potential in this collaboration for me and I did seem like a very mutually beneficial thing and it really really was and <sighs> sorry <laughs> um but yeah it it's it was like strange and it, it feels so weird because it's so everything's so hard right now and to have this opportunity come up because we're all home and distancing and it's just a very weird 
weird time and like socially distant hug guys um and i want to see my eyes got blurry um oh thank you you guys thank you um you guys are so nice thank you so much um yeah i wasn't sure i was like i realized like when i was talking i was like oh i know that threshold is coming up soon it's possible I was like, then the waterworks would really go, but not quite, but definitely it'll be crossed in, in June. And yeah, something like, I mean, you, I've had the, you guys have been the most supportive, whether people have just found me, some of you have been around for a really long time. And so you guys have been a really amazingly supportive of this journey for so long anyway. Um, but yeah, it just, I think that like something like early this year, I don't know what really switched, but YouTube, I think started recommending my videos more um, because then the, like the views started going up more than before. And that's been just cool. And so then it's just like, then this opportunity comes up and it's just, um, yeah, it's, you know, what someone commented that I would make a really good chemistry teacher. Uh, my, <laughs> Not, probably not these days, but I love being able to teach and being a teacher was something I always wanted to do. And there were some health circumstances that just changed my trajectory and what I was able to accomplish because of then my number of spoons, if you know spoon theory, my number of spoons was, became more limited. And so in, you know, and I started this as a hobby, I started Chemnitz as a hobby to just remind myself that I can still accomplish something. And yeah, I, you know, it was my lab notebook. <laughs> and, and, and then we're here. And so it is like wonderful. And so the, it gives me like, you know, working for myself does allow me a flexibility. So that way, if uh, I have chronic fatigue syndrome, which I've had for, a long time now uh, and so it like shifted my ability to do like bench research um, and things like that and so I'm glad that I found a new different way to make my dreams come true if, as hokey as that sounds um, so thank you <laughs> uh, um, Oh, thank you. Oh, I'm so glad I can make some nights entertaining. Um, and yeah, I know about uh, sleepless nights. There's occasionally like times when I, like if, if I, I can maintain and do very well if I balance. I had like a, gosh, earlier, maybe it was like even before the pandemic started, I had a flare up, um, which thankfully I don't really have it much pain um it's more of just like the the brain fog the fatigue and then the accompanying anxiety of not being able to make decisions so uh i i mean i think sometimes some of my anxiety if you like you know it's there then you really can see it in some of the videos but i found knitting and dyeing yarn to be freeing because with knitting you're just it's one stitch after the next and you don't always have to think 10 rows ahead. You can think just about and focus on just that next stitch. So the paralyzing decision-making wasn't there for me. And it was, and that really helped me. Um, and so my, when we were dealing with like all the, it was, this is basically a diagnosis of exclusion um, with like some sleep studies accompanying it, but uh, that showed I have hypersomnia. I go in because I'm like, I'm really tired. And they come in, they're like, oh yeah, you have hypersomnia. I'm like, thanks for a clinical diagnosis that I'm really tired. Um, but yeah, and so that was, uh, yeah, uh, amusing. Oh, but in doing this, the doctor was like, okay, I will get worried once you stop knitting. <laughs> um, and so I had a really like, wonderful doctor. This is all back at the end of grad school. Um, oh my goodness. Thank you. Oh, and
and now I'm going back up because you told me you said your your name's further up, and I want to. S oh no, my memory. Susie. Okay, Susie. Thank you so much for the super chat. Thank you, thank you, thank you, Susie MC. The numbers. <laughs> thank you so so much for that. Um, and Susie said. Um, gave me a super chat that just for sharing your journey with us, teaching us and making us smile and cry with you. Um, I, yeah, I'm, I'm not like, I, you know, I, I have, yeah, lots, lots of emotions. It's funny. Cause I, I think I was saying this in a video today because sometimes I get comments like you're too happy, which like, it's mostly like, well, thank you. <laughs> I am generally like, a fairly like positive happy person and try to find the positivity in things but yeah the the I think that the flip side is I could be really really happy but I can also be really really sad sometimes um and so that's just the yeah the re my re the reality if you log on in the wee hours of the night you almost often ca catch you here oh thank you thank you for watching um yeah, knitting allows me to, if I can shut my brain off, and this is what allowed me to start doing um, for other people with like other like fatigue type things. Learning how to shut my brain off and function has really, really helped me um, be able to engage and do more social things because my friends like, and like my husband know, like, I, it's like, okay, Rebecca is not going to need to make any decisions she can make small things and like we set the plan and then i can just exist <laughs> and it's wonderful and i'm very very lucky even if some of these really good friends live all over the world um or and yeah all over the world and the country and kenyatta thank you so much for the super chat thank you thank you so much i really appreciate it um <sighs> yeah, so sometimes, but even with a complicated pattern. So I am a person who I prefer charts over written instructions because I have like a magnetic chart keeper and sometimes I'll even use a highlighter if it's something that you're only going through the chart once. And so, you know, it's again, I can look at it and it can be a complex pattern, but it's stitch by stitch. Um, and that's, you know, it's like, what's the next stitch? And I like the charts because you can look back, backwards really easily to see what was before it. I have mentally have a lot harder time with written instructions, um, just because I have trouble seeing it and seeing what it should look like. Um, oh, I took a, ch a cable design workshop with Nora, um, Nora Khan once, and that was unbelievable uh i'd love oh man i miss when i lived in evanston so i used to live outside of chicago it was then really easy for me to go to vogue knitting live and Stitch, stitches midwest was only about 45 minutes to an hour west um and so like we'd go um like my like my husband likes seeing me go to yarn festivals but so he'd drive me and then like you know we'd make an adventure of it um but you know the yeah vogue Nini live also like it was just really easy to hop on the l and go into the city for it um and the nearest like vogue Nini live here would be in new york city which uh isn't really day tripable <laughs> so it's just more complex but my goal original goal for 2020 was to try to travel some and um go to like because i love taking classes and going and chatting with people in the like expo and things like that so i'd love to go and like and then you know maybe have like like a mini unofficial meet and greet or something um be like if you know people are gonna be around if we want to like get coffee or i don't know but of course that's probably off the table for for this year because there's not shows or anything so maybe maybe next year um or something i can try to make that happen because i'd like to but um e-hugs oh i like e-hugs thoughts that's really good but anyway i probably need to sign off i'm debating 
how or what state of destruction I can leave. So I'm like sitting by the front door because this is where we have packages. I'm wondering like what state I can leave this in without um, everyone destroying it. <laughs> the kids are good. The kids know not to touch yarn or if they do, they're very gentle. Um, the dog never touches yarn. He knows like that is, he's, he might hate other people, but he respects the yarn. So that's, that's good for a fur baby. Um, but <laughs> my husband's supportive, but he doesn't necessarily love it when it takes over the whole house. And I'm like all over right now. <laughs> oh my gosh. Um, aw. Yeah, no, I mean, I'd love to, and I, I mean, the thing is, like, I'd love to even try, like, a local dialogue or something someday, but I don't know, like, of a good space, because the problem is, like, the needing of water and heat, and, like, a lot of spaces might not want you to potentially spill Kool-Aid everywhere, so, um, no, I don't know much about Tintex dyes, and, um, Dusty, I'm not sure if it was you that asked me about that on a recent video. I did write it down to research more. Um, but if it wasn't you, then someone else asked me about it this week. And so that is on my radar to look more into, but I've never heard of it before. Probably. Oh, awesome. But yeah, uh, you guys are awesome. And I, <laughs> there's so much yarn. You know, I, I, you know, and it's time for me to start thinking about Hanukkah this year. And I don't know what things are going to look like because there's so much uncertainty. And I just know that, um, you know, I know like my kids are like, are going to like, are fine. They're, they're both like inquisitive and things and they're young enough that like I'm more worried about the social aspect of the isolation versus the um, academic, but thankfully they have each other. Um, and so, and they really are best friends. I mean, they fight, but they're, they're best friends. And so I'm, I'm really, really glad they have each other, but yeah, I hope for school. <laughs> um, oh, Kathleen, it might've been you asking about it. Yeah, visual, I'm I'm a very like visual person. Um, but anyway, all right, I'm gonna sign off and at least put all of this into a box so that way it is uh, less disruptive. But there is a, I think we'll leave no die behind video coming out tomorrow morning at 8.30 a.m. Eastern time. And so if you're not subscribed yet, please subscribe and turn on notifications because Sometimes live streams happen with advanced warning and sometimes like tonight, they come up pretty last minute, but I'm so glad so many of you could join me tonight. This was really, really fun to dig in and give some first impressions or just to talk about this very yarn. And so these are the, you know, nitpicks, dyer supplier and will to die for are the three companies I probably source from the most. Um, and again, I do have affiliate links in the video description and yeah. Thank you guys so much for joining. Um, you know, I would, I wish, I mean, I don't know how, how soon I would be able to do a big one like this. I do know that like my Paradise Fibers box is on the way. And by the end of the month, I should have the June Knit Crates. But uh, yeah, this was my, um, this was a big haul for me. <laughs> lots of, lots of videos are in here. Oh, Gretchen, thank you. Thank you. Um, yeah, good night, everyone. Oh, man. I, I mean, I really can talk about yarn for hours. And actually, uh, we're, we're working on setting things up so I can have one an, a day of longer filming uh, over the summer. And so maybe that can mean that I can finally, I wanted in March or March or in April or May, I wanted another time this spring to do one of those other like roll the dice like mystery color combination kind of things. And so hopefully, hopefully we'll be able to do one of those like by the end of the summer. So anyway, uh, stay safe everyone. Um, wishing tons of health and um, love from me. So, uh, and I'm an emotional, emotional person tonight, but I am just really thankful um, for all of you and for the chance to hang out and have some yarn chat. 
So yeah, I hope that you guys all have a wonderful, wonderful evening and a good weekend coming up. And I will chat with you all soon. Bye.